a graduate student in mechanical engineering, Brandon Lajewski, a senior in mechanical engineering, Johan Rodriguez. This, oh, they're here. Yeah, come on out. I was afraid I was going to read your whole eight member team if you guys weren't mic'd up, but well. <laughs> This is great. I love the music and all of, all of this. Um, all right, so I know I'm on a clock. So is it start when I start? Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brandon Lojeski, the president of Mesdi Systems. We've developed revolutionary. We've developed revolutionary equipment for manufacturing lithium ion batteries, solar cells, fuel cells, and other high precision devices. Our novel electrospray technology allows, allows coatings to be applied quicker, thinner, and more uniform than any technology on the market today. This will increase profit margins by enabling faster production speeds, improve quality control, and vast waste reduction. MESDI is a spin out from the University of Central Florida, and we were founded in March of last year. We completed our system prototype in September and established a letter of intent with UCF for exclusive licensing of, of the IP we developed in our lab in exchange for equity. So spray coating accomplishes taking a liquid and spreading it over a surface as thin and uniform as possible. Today pneumatic and ultrasonic spray are the two dominant technologies and they've reached their limit. Pneumatic spray uses high pressure gas to break liquid into droplets. This results in inconsistent droplet size and high waste as the gas flow blows droplets into the surroundings. Ultrasonic spray is a step better. It's capable of producing consistent droplet size and less waste than pneumatic spray. However, the fluid mechanics governing these techniques limit the smallest droplet size to 10 microns. This translates into higher coating thickness, excess material usage, and issues with product quality. Mezzi's equipment solves these critical gaps. Instead of using pressure or vibration, we use electricity to generate droplets that are an order of magnitude smaller and very uniform in size. The result is a very thin, precision coating with zero waste. This greatly increases product quality and also saves cost on materials. Our team is the world leaders in electrospray technology. We've worked closely together at UCF over the last two years to get where we are today. I've developed our system design under Dr. Deng's mentorship, and I currently manage all business aspects of the company. Our chief technology officer, Dr. Weiwei Deng, is a world-renowned pioneer in multiplexed electrospray technology. He has 14 publications in the area and holds three ongoing patent applications on the technology. Our chief manufacturing engineer is Mr. Jian Liu. He has over six years experience in developing automated manufacturing, equipment, and he did his PhD studies on the core manufacturing technique used to manufacture our nozzles. Our chief process engineer is Mrs. Chung Lee, and she's an expert in lithium ion battery manufacturing and testing. Our chief controls engineer is Mr. Michael Tolbane. He has nearly 30 years experience as a field engineer working on multi-million dollar defense simulators. He's responsible for developing our control systems. Our chief design engineer, who's with me today, Mr. Johan Rodriguez, he developed our automated electrospray slurry coating system prototype. Because our team consists mainly of technical experts, we've built out a business advisory board to help fill the gap of a missing CEO in our company. This consists of Mr. Scott Ferris, who's the CEO of Planar Energy, and Mrs. Kirsty Chadwick, who's the managing partner at Growth Innovators. Collectively, these two serial entrepreneurs have nearly 50 years of experience in startups. They've raised over $25 million in venture capital, successfully exited, and they've also sat on the investor side of the table. We also have Mr. Doug Helms, who's the former VP of Worldwide Sales at Copper Mountain. He grew their sales by an order of magnitude to $280 million in just a two-year period. He's helping develop our sales strategies and also identifying qualified sales executives to help grow our company. As a technical advisor, we have Mr. Craig Nelson. He has over 25 years experience in industrial automation for thin film deposition systems and lithium ion battery manufacturing. We also have a legal advisory team consisting of our corporate attorney, Mr. Ed Alexander of the Entrepreneurship Law Firm, and Mr. Brian S. Steinberger, who has over seven years experience as a reviewer for the USPTO. MESDI offers incredible benefits to a broad array of products. This includes lithium ion batteries, solar cells, fuel cells, 
and other precision products such as medical implants like a, a heart stent. In all cases, manufacturers desire coatings to be applied quicker, thinner, and more precise to increase product quality and reduce waste. Our systems can also be used to synthesize precision powders. This can be applied to lithium ion batteries and pharmaceuticals. The performance of powder is determined by the particle size and shape, and this is exactly what we provide control of. The immense opportunity in the lithium ion battery market, as well as our established collaborations with leading battery developers, make this our first target market for our products to emerge in. Long-term growth will be sustained by gaining traction in these other markets, such as solar cells, fuel cells, and medical devices. MESDI is currently working with two li leading lithium ion developers. This is Applied Materials and Planar Energy. These will be our first beta customers. We've identified a pipeline of additional lithium ion battery makers that we'll pursue once our commercial system has been developed. Leading coating equipment makers that can integrate our systems into their existing product lines can be used in an OEM model. This will drive volume-based growth for MESDI down the road. Another customer segment are chemical companies that produce electrode powders used for lithium ion batteries. These companies have licensed the chemical composition patents for these electrode powders, and they're positioned as the main players in the electrode powder market. Our systems enable them to produce the very highest quality powders with zero waste. MESDI generates revenue by selling equipment complemented by installation, maintenance, and warranty contracts. The amount of revenue generated per deal depends directly on the size and speed of the manufacturing operation that the customer is doing. Initially, our focus will be on existing manufacturing lines where we can install our equipment as drop-in units to replace their existing coating module. We anticipate average sales will, will be between 500 k to $1 million per customer. And as production and sales capabilities expand, we'll form OEM partnerships with coating equipment vendors to drive larger unit volume sales. We expect the average OEM deal size to be about $5 million. Here's a summary of our milestones to date. We were founded in March 2011 as a product of the DOE-sponsored Megawatt Ventures Business Plan Competition. We were awarded a $10,000 grant and given six months to complete our initial prototype. In August 2011, UCF's Office of Research and Commercialization began to secure the IP we developed in our lab and provided a letter of intent for exclusive licensing to MESDI in exchange for equity. We completed our product prototype in September 2011 and presented this at the Megawatt Ventures Business Plan Competition. In March 2012, we began working closely with two leading lithium-ion battery developers, Applied Materials and Planar Energy. Since we're under NDA with both of these companies, I can't say very much, but they're very interested in working with us to manufacture batteries and thin films. We're looking to secure Series A funding by August 2012, and we'll use this to launch production facilities and hire a full-time CEO to lead our business. As mentioned previously, there are significant issues with pneumatic spray systems, and these have been the de facto solution until today. To highlight these inherent problems, ultrasonic vendors have seen rapid growth since they entered the market. In 2011, our lead competitor, Sonatech, experienced 37% growth in revenues, and these were in the solar cell, fuel cell, and medical device markets. However, both of these solutions are still limited by droplet size, and they still have issues with material waste. MESDI has solved both of these problems. But as you can see, there are two other electrospray companies besides MESDI. Both of these companies have significantly inferior product designs, and they're not meant for mass manufacturing like our systems. They can only handle minuscule processing rates for mass spectroscopy and lab-scale nanomaterial synthesis. Our system was specifically designed for high-volume, high-precision manufacturing. We're the only vendor to provide low material waste, high flow rate, and uniform droplet size in the nanometer range. Moreover, we can handle a wide range of viscosities from simple aqueous liquids to very high, high solid content thick slurries. Here's a summary of our cash flow projections for the first five years of operations. In 2012, we'll focus on com completing our commercial grade prototype and we'll test this at our beta customers, Applied and Planar. Our first revenues will be generated in 2013 from five pilot customers with medium-sized production lines. Sales will ramp up starting in 2014, and we expect to break even by 2016 with revenues around $20 million. 
From there, we expect to see the classic hockey stick growth in both revenues and profit that will drive a strong exit and ROI for our investors. The table at the bottom summarizes various projected deal sizes, which depending on the size scale could be anywhere from 50K for pilot line installations to 2.5 million for high capacity and OEM partners. So to get this incredible technology out of the lab and into production, we're seeking $1 million in Series A financing. This funding will be supplemented by $1 million in grants that we've already identified. Collectively, this $2 million will be used to hire a CEO to lead our company, complete the development of our commercial grade system, and close our first customers. Depending on the number of sales during the first 24 months of operations, we will determine our needs for Series B financing. We expect this to be about around $5 million, and we'll use this to ramp up production and increase our sales staff to grow MESD. Our exit strategy is acquisition around 2018 by a large company to which our products complement their own, such as Applied Materials, BASF, 3M, or Dow. I hope I've been able to get you guys just a fraction of as excited as I am about these droplets and this new manufacturing technique that we've developed. And I really appreciate your attention today. And if you'd like to further discuss MESD Systems technology or business, uh, please feel free to contact me here. Um, otherwise, go ahead and fire away with questions. Thank you. Um, so I'm curious, what's the, sorry, that's loud. Um, what's the cost benefit of your technology versus the uh, competing products? So uh, I'll be upfront with this. This is something that we are, we're missing. Um, we can make some assumptions and, and show, you know, we could save 40% in cost savings. But this is going to be hand-waving until we actually get it into a production line and the customer can say that this saved us 40%. Um, the fact that we have these, these big companies that are interested in our technology shows that there, there is definitely cost savings benefits. Um, but we haven't run a, a true bottoms-up analysis yet to, to get those numbers and that's something that we're going to be working on here in the near future. So they've, um, they actually contacted us by finding my advisor's publications. He had a publication in 2009 titled Compact Multiplexing of Electrospray Sources. So they're, in the technology that they've been developing, they saw our technology and um, were very, very interested in integrating it into their process. So that's, that's, that's how they, they came about getting in contact with us. Uh, yes, yes, because it, it provides quality control. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a new level of precision. If, if you imagine um, these droplets are like little building blocks. So the smaller the building block is, the, the more precision control you'll have over you know, governing the thickness and the structure of, of the overall film. Uh, we have run simulations. It's somewhere here in my backup slides. Maybe it's not. We've run, we've run uh, GPU simulations that can completely simulate uh, the trajectory of these droplets, and we can produce uh, a simulation of the, the deposition uniformity, essentially. With the two partners that you have for pilot, are you retrofitting existing equipment to utilize your spray nozzle, or do you have to bring in a whole new piece of equipment that you're going to be making one on? That's, uh, that's part of our, our business model, and, and initially, we, we're just providing a drop-in component and, and retrofitting what they already have. What would prevent your competitors from altering their ability to uh, refine their spray and, and provide a drop-in model for their own unit? Uh, well, it's, it's a very, very technical device to get to operate. Um, so we have the expertise, and moreover, uh, we hope that UCF will be able to secure the IP we've developed in our lab. Uh, they're, they're currently working on three ongoing patent applications, so if um, those go through, we'll, we'll have uh, some security there. Uh, your recruitment effort as a CEO, where do you guys stand with that? And as part of that conversation, what, what did you negotiate in terms of equity with UCF? What percentage? Um, 
So as far as our, our CEO goes, we haven't, we haven't really started looking at specific people, but you know, they, they should have a background in high technology, either uh, you know, thin film deposition or some type of materials uh, background and, and work in those type of startups. And um, the, the equity in exchange for, for the IP, um, I, I can't speak to that uh, as of right now. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, and how, how large is this market uh, from the lithium ion market? Um, so from a, from a top-down perspective, the, the powders alone are expected to reach $5 billion by uh, 2017. And this is just the powders, and then afterwards they're integrated into the manufacturing process to develop the end cell. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a number for uh, the overall cell uh, market, but the, the, powder, the powders are alone are a very, very big market. So is that roughly about 50% of the cost of the batteries related to uh, this coating? Well, uh, I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, how, much, how much of the actual component is, you know, is it 50% of the component is the cost of the actual coating or 10%? Oh, uh, the cost of the actual coating uh, determines about 30% of the overall cost of the cell. And the, the powders themselves make up about uh, 70 to 80% of the entire cell. Side of the, the uh, revenue model that you have. Okay. Could you look at how many you know, unit production pieces of equipment are out there as a way to look at what you know, potential is? I know just a few for the lithium battery versus you know, lots of other things like thin film photovoltaics and other. other yeah, so that's, um, that's something that we, we haven't done yet and we plan on, on getting, getting that. That'll, that'll give us a, a true bottoms up analysis of what our market size is. If we could say, you know, there's this many coding operations in place and we can replace that many. But that's something that we're working on. And, um, you know, we're, we're very, very technically qualified, but we don't have anybody who has a true business background. So um, I'm actually in an accelerator program right now that's, that started uh, just last month. So they're, they're helping me develop the business plan and come up with these numbers. Uh, we, just, we just haven't quite got there yet. Um, that, that would depend on the application, but as long as uh, you can make your nozzles out of a uh, high temperature material, and um, we have initial results showing that we can make them out of uh, polymer-derived ceramics, which can withstand up to uh, 2,000, 3,000 degrees. They're actually, polymer-derived ceramic materials are used for um, sensors and turbine blades, so they can withstand very, very high temperatures. And we've shown that using our manufacturing process, we can al also make our nozzles out of that material. So, are applied or are putting up any money as part of our relationship with you um, They've given us a, a gift grant to, uh, to, to UCF, but um, apply or a planner, we, uh, okay, that, that was from Applied. They've given a, a gift grant to, to UCF for our research. Planner Energy, um, we're still in the, in the early stages of, of working that out. Uh, we haven't seen any money from them yet. In terms of the gift grant, are we talking plus six or less than six figures? Um, well, le less than six figures. Okay. But you have a little chicken in the egg, I guess, right? Because if you don't know the actual value savings of someone using your technology, you don't know what you should be asking a potential partner for, right? I mean, that's, you got to do that work. Right. We, right, now, right now we're basing all our costs based off of our projected manufacturing costs as well as our competitors' costs. But you don't, right, but back to your earlier answer, you don't get that great sense of your savings to the guys using the technology, right? Yeah, we can, I mean, we can throw up some numbers, but they'll be hand-waving until they actually implement it and show that it's, it's saved um, a right. specific amount. I guess just the one thought in my mind is it's really important to get Good hand on that as you can, because if one of these guys came to you and said, I'll give you X amount of dollars for this, or I'll take a manufacturing for that, you're a little bit shooting in the dark because you don't know what they're getting from it. I can, I can say off the top of my head, I know pneumatic spray, about 50 to 60 percent of material is wasted. An ultrasonic spray, that number is about 20 percent. We provide zero percent waste. So if you, if you go in to directly say, you know, what's the cost of your liquid, then that gives an idea. 
And so just to help me, because I'm not as quick on this as you are, you just said 50% of that waste. Could you even hand wave a number around what that dollar is versus what it would cost you to put your technology on it? Um, all right, so say it's 50% waste, and in their production run, they're, uh, they're processing liters per minute, and um, their liquids cost $5 uh, per liter. So multiply that by the number of minutes in a day, and you, you'd probably have a cost savings of, you know, you know probably five to $10,000 per day. Short. Um, it would be a cost of our system for, for a small scale would be about 50k for, for 